and yet the night he killed Lennon, he dropped into a, a, a professional shooting position, put five rounds in Lennon that a drill instructor would be proud of, and then his most strange behavior was when he was done. He stepped. He had three opportunities to escape. He could have either ran into Central Park, he could have uh, got onto the subway a block away and disappeared, or he could have just disappeared on the Manhattan streets. Instead, he backed up into the shadows, dropped the gun, pulled out J.D. Solinger's catcher in the rye, and was reading it when the cops arrived. Governor Ventura, you know, I hear that and I think, so why? What, what, or how, more interestingly? I mean, do you think he wasn't deranged, or do you think that the CIA dropped him? I think him? he very well could have been. You know, you, you, you know about the MK Ultra program of mind control and all that. That's all documented in the 50s and 60s. There was a good chance, in my opinion, he was what you would call, quote, unquote, a Manchurian candidate. So do you think that stuff works? Because I, I was never under the impression that they had successfully done that. Well, uh, we on my television show, we looked into it, and... Uh, I have a. I, I think that it absolutely could work if they have someone for over a year because hypnosis is a very powerful thing, and uh, you can't get someone under hypnosis the first time generally to commit an act of violence or a crime, but you certainly could do it over say a year or two if you had control of that person. And we actually met a guy who claims to be a Manchurian candidate. I thought he was crazy. And when I got done interviewing him, I turned to my crew after he left, and I said, well, if we don't believe it, he certainly does. But the unique thing about this guy was he, uh, he got involved in a bad auto accident and was injured, and he started getting his memory back. He went in for an MRI, and they found four microchips in his body. The MRI went ballistic. <laughs> now, how did he get them in his body? We're and talking, what do they do? We're talking to Governor Jesse Ventura, uh, former governor of Minnesota, of course. And uh, uh, the TV show he's referring to is on True TV, and his book is American Conspiracies. You mentioned the media on several occasions there, Governor. Uh, why do you think they play along? Um, I don't know. You know, the media uh, seems to, well, I think the reason that they play along with the government so well is they don't want to lose their access. Because if they start asking difficult, uncomfortable questions, they're not going to be let into, let into press conferences and things like that. So they'll lose their ability to be able to report on the government. And I think that's one of the things the government holds over the media, that if you, if you step too far and ask too many pointed questions, we won't let you in anymore. I want to go back to uh, one of the earlier chapters in your book about FDR and the plot yep. against him, also something that isn't talked about very much, because I think that might tie in a, a lot of other strands that we're talking about here. T tell us for a lot of people that are not familiar with that, uh, what, what was the plot against FDR? Well, basically it was a plot done by the, the Wall Street, pretty much. It was done by the heavy finance people. They thought that FDR was going far too socialist coming out of the Depression and all that, probably much the way they go after President Obama today for his uh, health care, you know, bringing socialism into America, like, you know, we don't dare have any type of socialism here at all. I believe you have to have a balance between the two. We saw capitalism pure didn't work. We just went through it when they took off all the deregulation on Wall Street, look what we ended up with. So I think there's a fine line you have to. You don't want to go all socialist either because Russia fell because of that. So you've got to have a combination, in my opinion, of both. But t fill us on, on uh, some of the details. Of oh, how did anyway, they try to get yeah, oh, yeah, the FDR. Okay, uh, what, what they tried to do, all these big shots, they literally tried to replace FDR with a coup. And they picked out uh, General Smedley Butler, who was going to be, uh, replace FDR uh, temporarily. But the problem was Smedley Butler had won a couple of Congressional Medal of Honor, and they picked the wrong guy because he informed on them and reported it all, and they all got caught. Yet none of them were prosecuted, nor none of them ever. Uh, the thing was basically hushed under the rug. So, and I agree with you when you say General Butler should be a hero that we should all talk about and we should know more about because he helped to save the country in a lot of ways. And, you know, it's an interesting uh, phenomenon that you point to where uh, capitalists sometimes, in order to make more money, want to be able to control uh, other governments because General Butler also talked about how he went to Latin America and did the bidding of corporate America earlier in his career whenever they wanted to control the oil in Mexico or the fruit in Central America that you know, they would use the Marines, basically. Absolutely. 
and so they want to have some degree of control over here as well. But, you know, I w and so have these conspiracies happened? Well, the FDR thing is a fact, obviously, and, and, uh, and we see many others. Uh, we talked uh, on an earlier time that you appeared on the program about the Gulf of Tonkin, uh, and, and that was a conspiracy and, and a lie by the American government. The question is, how does that translate to now? I mean, are there still the same forces at play? Are they doing the same tricks? Are they different tricks? I, I think it's worse today. I think it's the old cliche. They got away with it before, so they certainly can get away with it now. And I think it's actually worse today with all of that going on. Why, I mean, why today, worse? the government uses national security to cover up anything they do wrong. You know, if they break the law or violate the Constitution or whatever they do, and it gets exposed, the first thing they do then is call it national security, sweep it under the rug, and lock it up for 50 years where we can't see anything. Classic case is Lee Harvey Oswald. I mean, when you look at him, okay, what they told us is this guy was a Marine private, got out of the Marines, defected to the Soviet Union, married a Russian girl, came back, got angry at Kennedy, and killed him. Well, if that's the case, why would anything need to be locked up because of national security? Did you know today you still cannot get Lee Harvey Oswald's tax return because of national security? Now, how would his tax return affect national security? Well, if he was a paid CIA agent or something and got money from the government, it would leave a paper trail. And, they, and if he was connected to any of the alphabet agencies, which I believe he was, uh, that would lead you right there by seeing his tax return. And Governor Ventura, how do you think the CIA, which you mentioned in a lot of these plots, is connected to the business interests on Wall Street, et cetera, which you also mentioned as organizing some of these plots? I'm sorry, come at me with that again. How do you think the CIA is connected to the big business interests? Well, you know, after reading Fletcher Prouty, Colonel Fletcher Prouty's book, the CIA is a complete fraud in what it does. They tell us that it's to uh, gather intelligence and all that, but the reality is the CIA's job is to go out and start th wars in third world countries, according to Colonel Fletcher Prouty. Why is that? Uh, because you want me to go into all that? Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, because what, it's a natural question. Why? Why okay, would they want to start? Well, I got to back up. Then you got to go to the end of World War II. Right before we were going to, uh, right before we dropped the bombs on Japan, we thought that we were going to have to invade. So they moved huge armaments into Okinawa. Well, then they subsequently dropped the two bombs, and they didn't have to invade. Well, Fletcher Prouty in his book, told what happened to all those armaments. You know what happened to them? What's that? Half of them were sent to Korea, and half of them were given to Ho Chi Minh. Because what took place at the end of World War II was a meeting that Prouty was privy to, where the four of them got together and, and talked, to, and Prouty refers to the elites being even who's above them. Now, who's above Stalin? Who's above Roosevelt? Who's above Churchill? Who knows? But apparently it scared these people with the nuclear bombs so bad that they decided at that point, according to Prouty, that uh, all wars from then on would be fought in third world countries. They would uh, have no direct objective for victory for the military. And when you look over the past 50 years, that's exactly what has happened. So, you know, the, tru the, the, truth, the truth is in what happened. And when you look at it, it's exactly what Fletcher Prouty talked about. You know... I, of course, I don't know what to think of all the specifics. I mean, I, I read what you wrote, and it's interesting and compelling in many ways. Uh, but, you know, for those who are skeptical, then you look at Iraq. We sold them weapons. Donald Rumsfeld sold them weapons and then invaded Iraq for an indefinite war with no end to get rid of those weapons. Yep. Well, we also did the same thing with Iran. Well, we haven't invaded them yet, but... Well, we haven't <laughs> invaded them, but we, we've supplied Iran with massive amount of weapons to fight with, too. Um, we supplied both Iran and Iraq with the weapons that they used against each other. And uh, the guy who set up uh, Halliburton's office in Tehran, Iran, against American law, but he did it through a subsidiary in the Cayman Islands, was a guy named Dick Cheney. Yeah. So you look at this and you go, hmm, things that make me go, hmm. So we're talking to Governor Jesse Ventura. The book is American Conspiracy. 